We're building a slot machine where you hit the jackpot every single time. Because slot machines suck. You put in a ton of money and you hardly ever win anything. I wanna fix that. But I'm not rich. I can't just be giving away jackpots to everybody that comes along. So I also bought an ATM machine and they're super boring. Frankly, I think that you should feel like a winner every time you get cash out. So we're gonna marry the two together into an ATM slot machine. The idea is that you put in your debit card, you type in your pin number, you select how much you'd like to win, you pull the handle, the real spin, jackpot guaranteed, every single time, all for the low, low price of the ATM fee. I'm joining forces with my friend Matt from Small Change Arcade. Dude, thank you for coming along with me on this crazy adventure. My pleasure, man. We got a lot of work ahead of us. <laughs> We're supposed to take this to DEF CON, which is the largest hacker convention in the US, in three weeks to show it off. And we better get going. Yeah. But first, I think we gotta rewind back to the beginning. So first thing first, we gotta find a slot machine. We found Squires and Cory, which is supposedly a slot machine store, and it looks really awesome from the photos online. Well, this is kind of what I'm thinking. Round top, sort of, you know, bigger machine, mm -hmm. still with, you know, obviously with, with reels. It would add on, like set this forward somehow. Okay. And we'll put the ATM screen here. You put the hoppers up here. You, you could really make a glass. You match the, 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 the color scheme sure. up here, yep, but sure. do your own thing. Yep. I'll tell you what, we've got a Sigma. No, it's 110, this is Japanese. Yeah. But since you're programming it, we've got that in the warehouse and okay. we've never repaired it. Okay. Are you here locally in town? I'll be around. So. All right, yeah. I'll look forward to yeah. seeing you on Friday. All right, okay, so here it is. You ready? Awesome, yeah. So there's a switch right down here. <laughs> All right. Everything lights up. <laughs> okay, now, just pull the handle. Cool. There you go, you lost. <laughs> awesome. See, we're gonna fix that. So you've got some nickels. Okay, we didn't win anything. Let's cash out. <laughs> okay. You open it up, you get this crazy. <laughs> we got the hopper down here. Yep. Uh, the PCB is right here. Oh, sweet. This Standard is looking stuff. really intimidating. <laughs> if the plan is to replace this, this is looking like a project. It's okay. doing a lot of things for there's, sure. And there's a lot of lot of cables going into it. Yep. Uh, okay. But the good news is they're all kind of grouped. We got our cables going to our reels, yep. to the bill validator, to the coin mech over here, to the hopper. Okay. This is less intimidating now that we've looked at it. It seems like there's no piece that's gonna be like, oh God, this is gonna be horrible. Right. So we bought an ATM off Craigslist for 50 bucks, but no clue if it works or not. <laughs> So this is it. Oh, that is not the greatest screen. Huh? No, no, it's not. <laughs> I wonder if we can replace the screen. Well, we're getting another one. Oh yeah. yeah right. Yeah, so sure. we got another one on the way that we think we actually can hook up to the ATM network. This is one. It the same style. It's the same exact machine. Oh really? But it has a different card reader, oh. and like. Oh, that's amazing. It's more same likely screen. to be working. That's amazing. What's it say under password? No keypad action. I don't know. I don't feel like we got gypped for our fifty bucks. <laughs> so it looks like this has a gear that fits in it, and that turns the, yeah, it spits out the bills from the bottom there. So I think they come in here. That's hilarious. Manual ATM machine. I mean, we could really, literally wait until we get the next one to figure out a, a, anything with functionality. Yeah. We could just focus on, so we need this Last piece here, yep. we need that piece there, and this yeah. piece here. And I think that's, that's it. it. So I think we get in there and we start poking around and sort of see what's going on. Mm -hmm. So, oh, oh that, <laughs> that is pretty easy to remove, it turns out. This whole thing comes off. Does it? This whole thing. I was wondering about that. That's where we can expand out. Put our, yeah, yeah, yeah. We can just build a frame that goes around oh, totally. here. Oh, totally. Yeah, it's gonna hook. All right, I think the next step is just to map out all of the electrical pieces that I'm gonna need to be able to control to replicate the slot machine experience. There we go, 12 volts. 
All right, so now I have an individual reel to work with. I wish I knew what voltage this stepper motor was. I'm hoping it's 12 volts, because that's what I have the control board for. Crap, it's 24 volts. I'm screwed. I'm gonna try running the stepper motor for one reel at 12 volts, which it's rated for 24. Set speed, 10 RPM. Can we do 100 RPM? It works at slow speeds, but not at fast speeds. I don't think this is gonna work. It's just too slow, and that's not a very exciting slot machine. I have to find a new stepper motor driver. Normally this is like this. Well, if we have to bump it out anyways, you know? You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, why don't we ask Derek, my shop mate, about this? <laughs> so this is gonna go about here, and this is gonna go right here. Would it be possible to uh, cut, like, right here, remove this, bring it out? Yeah, like extrude the face? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You could sort of stitch it, and then maybe you could line the line with some sort of like what you do with your uh, with your small change arcade sort of like a molding. edging, yeah. For the where the, the I mean that would just that would just eliminate all of that delicate grinding sculpture esque kind of welding that would need to go down. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> you just saved us some some time, Derek. I think you guys figured it on your own. <laughs> I finished the cardboard mock-up here of our piece that's going to extrude out. Our buddy Derek here in the shop. A really nice piece of already yeah. break formed uh, yeah, sheet metal here of steel. And so, this nice bend here is going to be our lip on the front. And the first step is just to tack it all together just so it stays in place, then we can do the final welds uh, later. But I haven't used this machine in a while or welded much in general. <laughs> so, um, I'm just going to do a little test. We got um, our front piece all uh, mocked up and tack welded together. And so now we have to do all these side welds and along the back too. And in the interest of time and just skill and not messing this up, I think we're gonna have our buddy Derek um, help us with I this. I thought you were gonna do it. Well, I thought more about it. <laughs> <laughs> Great there. Yeah, that's awesome. Thanks, Thank Derek. you, Derek. Yeah. Cool. Well, I'm gonna get this yeah. mounted. That looks good. Yeah. It's even level. Good. Knew <laughs> <laughs> that was gonna happen. I was like, oh, I can see it. Small pallet. That's the wireless modem. Test printing. Okay. Right. Oh, connecting to the host. Welcome strange parts. Whoa! <laughs> it seems like it's working great. Should we put some 20s in it? And... and we're gonna do 40 bucks. <laughs> okay, try that just approved. Move your part. <laughs> yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> Ben with us. Ben has been helping me on the logistics side with this project. The plan is to take this contraption to DEF CON, which is in Las Vegas inside a casino. We need to get coins to put in the machine, which means we have to call ahead to the bank. We were just sort of throwing out numbers and we were like, if we could do like 
I don't know, a hundred or so plays a day at $20 a play, that would be like, I don't know, for four days, that's like $8,000. Mm -hmm. The other thing that we've been talking about is like different denominations. Right. Sometimes get pennies and sometimes get nickels and sometimes get quarters. The first thing that comes to mind with that is that that's $1,000 in pennies, which at 2.5 grams a piece, uh -huh is 250 kilograms. <laughs> <laughs> you could also do like, <clears throat> it's just quarters, but like the jackpot chance is like real jackpot chance. Like right. one in right. a thousand. Right. So I think we're shooting for quarters and pennies. Why don't you call Steve right now? Hey Steve, it's Matt. Yeah, you think there's a pretty good chance you got a, you have a quarter hopper? I, 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 I think I, uh, we may have both. Okay. Awesome, thank you. Sorry to bug you. Let's operate under the assumption that he has both. Yeah, yeah. All right, so I gotta write a tweet to get people to help us get the coins from the bank safely. We're not gonna be able to do armored cars. So, how does this sound? Wanted, volunteer private security detail for DEF CON for Strange Parts Special Project. No prior experience required. Must provide your own DEF CON badge. Hilarity guaranteed. Email your qualifications to goons at strangeparts.com. That's great. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, it's okay. definitely ambiguous. Okay. But like intriguing enough. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's see what that brings in. Okay, have a quick update on the coins. Just go off the phone with the bank. They can do the number of coins, they just don't have the storage for it. <laughs> so they've given me the phone number for the biggest Chase Bank in Las Vegas. And we're gonna see if we can order it to that bank instead because the <laughs> bank which is near the hotel cannot put it in their safe. Okay. I feel like so we might end up ordering coins to different banks, depending on, they said they could do about half. So worst case, we could order some to one branch, some okay. to another branch. Or maybe this is a sign that we're ordering too many coins. <laughs> Yo, you wanna check out uh, some new graphics I'm working on? Oh yeah. So, I present to you, the automatic treasure machine. Okay, I like that a lot better. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, I do. And so then, yeah. I was thinking, it works out pretty good, because then you've got ATM up on top, then you don't necessarily have to repeat it down here. You yep. do the jackpot guaranteed. Yep. So you can use that spin, put some catch raises in there every spin yep. wins or something like that. Yep. And then down at the bottom, you can repeat ATM again, but it's not like jammed together with the other ATM. I love it. Dude, we got our first email applying for the goon position for, uh, for DEF CON. Oh my god, what does it say? Uh, qualifications. I live at a compound where I was under constant threat by neighbors with tanks. <laughs> this invaluable experience taught me how to deal with difficult people and local law enforcement. Can provide own anti-tank rocket launcher, provided I don't get accused of having a bomb at the airport again. <laughs> again? <laughs> <laughs> Although my combat skills are limited, I've survived chlorine gas and being lit on fire. I make a great human shield. I just feel like got a winner there, bud. <laughs> so the crazy part is that I've actually met this guy before. Oh, really? And all of that's 100% real. <laughs> So a bit of an update on the coin situation. <laughs> so you called Chase on Friday. Yep. And it turns out they can't indeed order anything close to the volume that we wanted them to order to for a really dumb reason. Uh, and that's that their vaults aren't big enough. <laughs> so you called and called and called and called and called. And called 36 branches. Oh my God. We are resorting to driving around San Francisco to all of the bank branches that we can, asking for as many quarters and pennies as they'll give us. We feel like total bank robbers. Ben, Ben's the uh, the getaway driver, and I'm the bag man. And uh, I go in and get whatever I can, and come out to the curb and try and find Ben and Behind stash away the, the coins. Man. Yeah, it's uh, this is an adventure. All right, I'll see you in a bit. We hit the jackpot. They gave me two boxes of each and they have two more boxes of quarters. So. Uh, I think this is gonna solve a whole lot of our problems.
This video's turned super weird. All right, so I'm back at the shop. I was at an arcade convention all weekend called California Extreme. Scotty is still up in Vancouver for uh, LTX, but he should be back any day now. But while he's gone, I gotta keep working. I've got the topper almost done. I gotta finish up a couple little things. Down here, I've got the keypad installed. That's good for now. Uh, but my big challenge is mounting the screen and buttons. Like you can see over here, this whole section needs to be mounted in here. Fits nicely, but now obviously we've got these gaps along the side here, and we don't want that. So we're probably gonna have to add some material in here later, but before we do that, I wanna get it as close as I can without doing that, and I want this as flat and sunken down into the rest of this as possible. Well, I got the surface, we have these gaps around the bezel for this overlay that we need to fill in. And I put a little uh, more uh, plastic on there for now. And so when this all goes together, it started by putting some more material on the back. And so now when I attach this, it should make a tight seal. It's ABS, you can uh, dissolve ABS in uh, acetone. So now I've got my syringe here. I'm going to start filling up these gaps. We got these new stepper controller boards that can run at 24 volts and I'm hoping that that's gonna let me spin the reel faster at a, at a proper slot machine speed. Hey! Now let's try cranking up the speed. 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120, 130, 140, 150! So after many trials and tribulations of how to make this thing chrome, what we ended up on is this crazy spray paint chrome. And it's apparently like nothing else on the market. All the other stuff I tried just looks like silver paint. And the first step before I like prepped and sanded this like dozens of times <laughs> was to put this uh, glossy black base coat on it. And then we're gonna hit it with this chrome. And it's supposed to look a little just kind of like dull at first, but then it should all clear up and look perfectly chrome. So let's see. So now we should just be able to wait, and within like two minutes, it should start turning into like shiny chrome. How much did you pay for this paint? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> one one can of the chrome, which came with like a couple cans of the base coat, um, was two hundred and sixty dollars. <laughs> oh my god! I put a pretty heavy coat on, so it might might take a second for it all to start to do whatever it does, the magic. Should we put it like in the sun? No. No, just let it dry. So it looks pretty gray. <laughs> like these part, parts are starting to look kind of shiny, right? Yeah. Yeah, we're definitely seeing more reflections than we were before. Well, it's better than like the normal spray paint silver, but it didn't do what I expected it to do. I'm wondering if it's because I put too much on, like maybe too heavy of a coat. So I have a couple test pieces. I'm gonna try that again. It will be shiny. <laughs> Chrome paint works. <laughs> I just used way, way too much. <laughs> so you just have to be like, psh, 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 and it just, it instantly turns chrome. <laughs> We're sitting there for like 20 minutes. So that's good news. I just gotta redo it. We have a quarter hopper and a one cent hopper now, straight from Steve. They look really different. Did we get any info on voltage? No, I asked him and his response was, they're clever guys. Fuck me. Got our work cut out for us. I gotta figure out how to make the quarter hopper 
and the penny hopper work here. They're old school. Fingers crossed, it's gonna be straightforward, but it almost never is. spent way too long this afternoon wiring up the two switches where the coins go through. So this one is how full the hopper is, this one is did a coin go through. I should be able to dispense an accurate amount of coins. It's not working as intended. Set the debounce time in milliseconds. Set it to 50. Oh, it is reset to 50. Let's try less. Nice. That worked. Yeah, cool. cool. Okay, 20 milliseconds it is. Let me wire up the other hopper, and we'll just test that one works too, but I think we have working hoppers, Matt. Okay, it turns out this is a totally different hopper. The switches are in different spots. The wiring is all different. So this here is the coin switch, right? Right, which normally the switch is right there. Coin comes in, it goes up. Then it's supposed to return oh, mechanical. and mechanically advance, but it's sticky. So I feel like oh. that released this. So now that's working. So that disengages this guy. Yeah, so there's a pawl here. How do we, I guess we could just like zip tie that over. That'll work. We gotta do the glass for the top here. I've cut some glass before, but not as complex or as thick as we're doing here. And so luckily there's a glass shop next door and our buddy Nate is gonna help us out. So I've, I've partitioned out like your first rectangle. Yeah. Um, and then your second, and then these are all the drops. So we're gonna try to cut straight lines as much as we can. Right. Um, you can cut curves, they're just a little trickier and your loss rate is much higher. Yeah. So I think we, if we just give yeah, these straight ones, then we take this to the saw and I think we can take a straight line off here and a straight one here yeah. and then we can just finish it off with belt sander. Sweet. Yeah, and it'll just be really nice and clean. Perfect. picked up the graphics. You can kind of see it if you hold it up to the light. So we'll be able to pull this off and then apply it on the inside of the glass. to figure out how to interface with the ATM. Um, I think the best way is probably through the bill dispenser. Let's see how this thing works. I think you'll put in your ATM card, you'll type in your pin number, you'll select how much you would like to be dispensed, how much you would like to win, and then what would normally happen is that the motor would turn here. If the sensor sensed that it successfully spit out a $20 bill, then it would tell your bank, yes, we dispensed $20. So what I think will happen is instead, we will intercept the signal to dispense $20. 
we will tell the ATM machine that yes, indeed, we did dispense $20, and then that will turn on the slot machine. I just need to figure out what voltage that motor is. I'm gonna build a really short cable. All right, here it is, finished thing. So I'm gonna plug this end and this end into the original plugs, and then plug my Arduino or my multimeter in here uh, to do my diagnostics. Yay! And it's only 15 volts, 16 volts? So I started like looking at this machine over here. So every single wire on this rainbow ribbon cable goes to a sensor or a motor. So initially I was thinking, oh, I have to spook all of those. Right. And that sounds like a huge pain in the neck. Our original plan was just to stick this in the base, right? And yep. put paper. Just a dummy. Right. Yeah. And the problem with that is that we have to put paper in it, right? Yeah. yeah. So what if we just eliminated the need to actually have paper pass through? So what if I just spoofed the sensors that look for the paper and let all of the other motors and things just run right. exactly as they should? It's ridiculous. I mean, we know it but kind like, of works. So it's like, yeah. you know. 12 volts DC. What? I'm not <laughs> in love with this being the answer because it means I have to build a circuit to Gips. handle 12 volts. Yeah. Arduino, grounded to the chassis. This should be putting out 12 volts via motor controller. So right now the cash dispenser should not run. This is not hooked up to the photo sensor. This should error. Okay, it does. Now I'm gonna attach these together. It should work. Yes! What this basically says is now I can control the state of the switch via software from the Arduino. So I just need to wire up five more of these connect them to the motor shield. Hey, that's it. I got it to work. So the clutch is just running for a very short amount of time, which means it, sensed, it dispensed a note. We are good. So I have written a simple program just to turn the onboard LED on the Arduino on and off when the motor of the cache mechanism runs on the ATM machine. In service, that should run. Yep, it works, light comes on. I guess the next thing really is to hook up what I just did to activating the one-time jackpot experience. All right, machine is now initialized, uh, but the handle is not working. That should enable the handle and Fingers crossed. Hey! And then it would spit out coins. That's, That's pretty much <laughs> it, right? We're done. Success! Great. All right, I guess it's time to move the ATM parts over the slot machine. Do we remember where everything goes? Should we be taking pictures? high consequence if we screw it up. It could be the end of the ATM machine. <laughs> oh, it turns on. Why isn't the keypad working? Dude, where's the other keypad? It's kind of the same state as it was before in terms of lights. Why is the other keypad? Card reader here, that seems weird. And here, crazy theory? Yeah. This has a battery in it. When you disconnect this from that, it like breaks the cycles and you have to do something magical to reset. Like as a security thing? Yeah. Like this might just be as simple as like Very someone. Like, this number. Yeah. It's like in the magic combo. What is it? Up, down, up, 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 down, down, left, right, left, right, D, A. Yeah, that's what we need. <laughs> I'm not running on much sleep. I, uh... I got back to the hotel last night about 
2 or 2.30, I guess. And uh, it's 9 now. I'm headed back to the shop. Got a flight to Vegas at 8 p.m. Uh, so the slot machine has to be finished and on the truck by 6. And, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not feeling super optimistic that that's going to happen. Regardless, I bags are packed. I'm going to head over to the shop, see what we can do in the next few hours, and uh, go from there. So, I just got off the phone with Hyosung Technical Support, who was exceptionally helpful and did not at all ask me why I wanted to know all of these things or why I had problems. But uh, he basically walked me through a bunch of troubleshooting and... Yeah, no luck. Like, we tried resetting the keypad, we measured some voltages, and uh, the conclusion is the keypad's bad, and then we need a new one. Um, which I just, I don't believe that that's possible. This is the 88 one. I just realized. It's the audio out. I I'll be cut the baffled if this works, but... This Before we do anything more, this seems cheap. That is not the silliest thing we've tried. Here goes nothing. Jesus Christ. Oh my God. <sighs> That's ridiculous. That doesn't necessarily mean we have keypad, but... What engineering decision do you have to make <laughs> that the keypad input is dependent on the headphone jack being plugged in. We're in. Everything except the receipt printer is online. Holy smokes. All right, we gotta figure out how to get the master key back in it. I found a YouTube video on how to enter master keys into your ATM. I don't know what the master keys even are. We still don't have a deep enough password. I think that's just a phone call to them. Let's do that. So we're kind of like done with this, right? Don't even say that. Let's at least get it this thing like <laughs> online first, and then we can declare victory. We just called the folks that sold us the ATM machine, and they're a little confused as to how <laughs> we've ended up in that state. But they are generating a new master key, and they're going to call us back in 15 minutes and tell us how to install it. Three and a half hours until I have to leave for the airport. And the question is, can we do it? So I got bad news. Um, when we were on the phone with Hyosung Tech Support, they had us reset the keypad to try and get it working, which cleared the encryption keys off of it. And we didn't know this at the time, but we don't have the master password to get into the menu to put the encryption keys back in. And the people that sold it to us on eBay won't give us the master password, and they won't say why. I think it's because they're lazy and they put the same master password on all of their ATM machines. But anyway, like the long story short, uh, we're not gonna get this fixed today. And um, this thing's not coming to DEF CON. So, uh, I don't know, I'm pretty bummed. Um, I don't know, I, I just can't believe we like, <laughs> we're so close. And uh, I can't believe this is the thing that's tripping us up. So many people have helped with this, and I don't know. I just feel like. I feel like we've screwed up. I'm sorry. It's okay. You know how eager I'm, I am to be done with this. Yeah. So, therefore, I can only imagine how eager you are. That's really the only thing I'm upset about, <laughs> is that it's not done. I smelled smoke. I was just sitting here debugging, and I smelled smoke, and I shut everything off. The screen's not showing anything. I don't know what happened. I think we're dead in the water. Oh my god. I'm so nervous about this. I really, I honestly hate talking on the phone, and I particularly hate talking on the phone in like business context people I don't know to try and convince them to do things. <laughs> just really, really dislike it. Um, my ATM won't boot. It's 
blue screening. I'm gonna go home and cry. It seems like I've got one more chance to get this right. Uh, if I break these parts, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Why can't this be easier? <laughs> it boots! It boots, it boots, it boots, it boots! Can you just want to stick it in? Yeah, just do a normal ATM transaction. <laughs> I don't even have another transaction though. <laughs> he knows too much. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta ask something from the outside. <laughs> <laughs>